I love creating games. It's a difficult but amazing process. It's already pretty hard in 2D, but even harder in 3D. Damn you, Z axis. But you know what I hate the most about 3D? Texturing. I just hate the process. But fortunately, we live in 2022, AKA the future. So we should have tools to make that easier, right? Right? Unless you live under a rock. Hello, Patrick. Morning. You probably understand where I'm going with this. I want to use AI to create textures for me. DALI 2, Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey, all of these trendy thingy will help me to create something cool. All right, let's go. I told you I hated texturing, but you know what I hate even more than that? Optimizing my models. What can I say? I like to put the subdiff to 10. Thankfully, the future is now, and thanks to today's sponsor, Adapta Studio, you too can easily optimize your 3D models with the click of a button. Adapta Studio is an easy to use online platform where you just upload your 3D models in FBX, GLTF, OBG, whatever, select from a preset, hard surface, organic, or smooth surface, choose the level of optimization, and boom, it's cloud based, so yes, you can use your potato computer. And after a few seconds of processing, it's done. You can then easily compare the the original to the optimized model both in wireframe and rendered view. Their algorithm is made to preserve your UV mapping and animations, so you can just send your model fully textured and animated without thinking much. There's even a preset for us game dev that automatically generates three LODs for our model. What more do you want? Oh, you want to try? Sure. Adapta Studio lets you try their software with a hundred free credits. This means a hundred optimizations. Psst and then 10 free optimizations per month after that. So what are you waiting for? Send your million vertices model into Adapta Studio's machine and let it do its magic. Check out Adapta for free now using the link in the description. People are doing crazy things with these tools, but I want to do a simple 3D scene where I create all the textures using the AI tools that are available out there. I start by creating a simple FPS controller and then a world. I live near the mountains, so I think a mountain-like terrain could be cool. Fortunately for us, both DALI and Mid Journey provide free credits. I just start by typing what I want to see. I try to be as descriptive as possible to get what I'm expecting. 30 seconds into it and the problems arise. I find it difficult to get exactly what I want. The AI seems to be sentient and acting like a 4 years old when you ask them to go to bed. They do everything but what you told them. I try a bunch of stuff and burn a lot of credits in the process. It feels like going to the casino. But after some time, I start to get cool stuff. Using top-down photo and texture inside my prompt helped a lot. The AI is good at doing weird stuff and sometimes asking for more realistic stuff yields poorer results. Also, the AI has a tendency to crop what's interesting. So I try to get better results by adding the composition I want into my prompt, like full shot, full page, etc. Now that I have something to work with, I have two problems. The textures are small, only 512 by 512, and they don't necessarily tile very well. But no worries, I told you we were living in the future, right? We can easily upscale our images using free tools. You can even find lots of them online. I use video to X with a nice user interface. I drop the image, crank up the scaling, hit start, and boom, the texture is now 2K. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I might say. Now we need to make it tileable, and for that, I'm using a super cool online tool called imageonline.com slash UA and make si I drop the image, select a method, and check the result. Depending on the texture I'm trying to make seamless, I need to use a different method. There's one last thing though. I have a texture, that's cool, but it's just color. If I only use that, everything is going to look very flat. See, every modern game engine can use physically based rendering, aka PBR, and to take full advantage of PBR, we need other textures such as roughness to tell how smooth our model is, normal to tell the light how to bounce off of our model, ambient occlusion to add soft shadows, and a bump map to fake having more geometry details on the model. Fortunately, there's a tool for that. Using normal map online, I just put my texture, tweak a bit the settings, and boom, I have everything I need. Now let's jump into the engine and try them out. To try the textures, I create a simple terrain using a a very cool plugin. Shout out to Xylan for his work. Then it's just a question of setting up the textures and we can start to paint. And 
voila, it already looks pretty cool. The textures look good and the tiling effect can be easily reduced by rotating the texture and blending between the tile. Okay, something just happened and it changes a lot. Remember when I was explaining how we need a tool to make the textures tile seamlessly? Well, we don't need that anymore. Stable Diffusion was just released and because it's fully open sourced, people are already doing pretty cool stuff with it. Right now, I have it on my computer with a slick UI and let me show you what's on the UI. Can you see that? Yes, tiling. It means the textures are now automatically tileable. This is slick. And of course, there's an upscaler built inside of it, because why not? There's a lot more options and cool stuff, but my monkey brain doesn't understand, so do your own research, it's super interesting. Oh, and if you don't have a beefy computer to run it locally, you can use Google Collab. Someone made it available, and so you can use Google's power to run your images. Link in the description. Now that we have our little scene, I decide to model a simple house and a sofa. Again, I'm using the AI to generate the textures and repeat the same process as before to upscale and create PBR materials. It's looking good, so I also try different stuff, like creating illustrations, other textures like ice or weird wallpapers. We can really generate lots of different things, like newspapers or user manual. Generating text doesn't work well, but I think it's okay because the layout is there, so you can just replace it with whatever. I decide to add some of the results I had as paintings in my little scene, and I also generate grass and flowers that I paint on my terrain. I have a cool barrel that I want to use, but no textures. No problem though, I'm just going to combine some stuff. I'm reusing a rust material I created before, and to make the barrel cooler, I asked the AI for an acid warning danger sign with a skull. I like the result it's giving me, so I use Photoshop to get only the sign and also correct its perspective. I then combine the two materials in Blender, and here's my barrel in all its glory. Overall, I think it looks pretty cool. It's not groundbreaking, but I'm not an expert in 3D, and I had limited time to create that. I guess it could look better going with an even more stylized style. With the little demo I did, I only scratched the surface and AI can be prompted in many ways, not just by typing text. You can use images or simple drawings as starting points. The AI can also do outpainting and inpainting, meaning you can ask it to generate what is outside of the image or replace part of the image with something else. People have already been using it to create crazy stuff where they replace clothes in images, for example. I personally just asked for a dragon on one of my drawings. I think the real power of these tools come from your creativity. It's up to you to think outside of the box and do cool stuff with the results. All of what we've seen until now is super cool, but of course there are still lots of limitations. First of all, even if the AI is doing a lot, it still requires time, energy and even money to create cool images. Using DALI 2 or Mid Journey will cost you money and even if you run stable diffusion locally, it can be quite slow depending on your machine. Creating the right prompt for what you want can be hard and tedious. Even when you have nice results, there's still a good amount of work like creating the PBR materials or even just touching up the image to cut out a portion or make it how you want. In my case, it would have been much much faster to just go online and grab free PBR textures from Ambient CG or another site. In my example, I'm just messing around. I don't care if everything doesn't go perfectly together. Having a coherent art style is surely a challenge and the AI is not going to give you good taste, so you'll probably still need artists. I think where the AI can really shine is when creating weird stuff that you may have a hard time imagining or even finding online. It can be an awesome tool to create concept arts and create new things.
Then of course, there's the ethical question. We don't know how these AI were trained and it's possible that they use copyrighted content. With some of them, it's possible to use artist names to reproduce their style. The line between inspiration and blatant copy is very thin here. One thing that I know is that it's just the beginning. The field is moving and fast, especially with stable diffusion being open source. People already made plugging for Blender, Photoshop and even Godot. I can't wait to see people perfecting the tools and at some point we'll probably see one directly creating PBR textures or images with transparency for example. And you, what do you think of all of that? Do you believe the AI will replace all artists or that it's just going to be another tool to facilitate our work? What do you think of being able to reproduce an artist's style? I'm genuinely curious and honestly at the moment I'm not sure what to think, so tell me in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video, like, subscribe, wishlist dash bomb. Bye!